Brooke here. We are on day two of the trip to Alaska. We are traveling from Newport, Oregon to Alaska. I wanted to take you guys on the journey with me. We've got a ton of new subscribers lately. And thank you so much for your interest. Thank you for watching. I talk about fishing, I talk about travel, and then some other random videos that you could be like, what the fuck is that doing here? That's just my style, okay? You watch the ones you want to. You don't watch the ones you don't want to. The point is to share, to share in the experience a little bit. And also, this is, you know, it's not the best day at sea as far as being calm. And I wanted to show you guys that. So you might even get a little dizzy, a little nauseous, just watching me. Hello? One of the things about being on a crab boat, being out on the ocean, is you have to leave your radio on 16. That is the international distress channel to have your radio on 16. So any boat that is in distress, the Coast Guard comes onto that channel. And then you can hear if the Coast Guard's calling you or if there's a boat in distress anywhere around you. And we ourselves could make a distress call, like right now, from that channel. So that's pretty comforting to know. We also have a backup radio, which is pretty cool. When you're on the ocean, you wanna be prepared. You want to have as much things with you in order to help you in any form of distress as possible. There's a lot of you subscribers that are fishermen already, so this is probably some basic information for you. And I hope to be sharing some of this information with anyone who's not on the boat that doesn't know how it is, just because it is quite an experience to live on a crab boat, to you know fish for a living, to travel for a living, and you know just kind of share that experience are you getting a little dizzy right now just watching me because this is also part of the experience to be on the boat to rely on the weather every day the swell height which is the height from you know the swell to the bottom of the ocean and then there's the there's also a distance between those swells which is very important so it's a big if it's a big swell like maybe they're calling for a 20 foot swell but then it's at like 20 seconds or something that means that there's 20 seconds in between one huge swell and the next big swell which is actually really nice then you can just kind of float over one and then you're just going to be floating over the swells and it's not really that big of a deal. But they call them roller waves, those, those big swells. But then you can also have a big swell and then what's called a low interval in between the swells and it could be really choppy. So you could just have a little bit of time to get up to that next wave and that could cause the boat to rock a lot. So right now we have a westerly wind. We're heading north. We are on the northern coast we are on the southwestern part of washington right now just off the just a little bit north, north of ocean shores and there is a northwesterly wind coming so if you say northwesterly then that means the wind whatever direction you say is the direction that the wind is coming from so if i say northwesterly then that wind is going to be coming northwesterly and a lot of times the swell or the waves will follow that um, wind not always a lot of the time there's a westerly swell which means that the waves are coming from the west and going towards the beach which I would think would kind of be always but that isn't true if it's a southerly wind sometimes which means coming from the south which in our case right now would be good because we're traveling north so the wind would be at our back sometimes the swell can be coming from the south which would be good because we'd be riding the waves to the north now, if there's a northerly and the swell is coming from the north, then you call that kind of bucking into the current. And that's when we're gonna be going the slowest because you're going against the current, against the waves, against the tide and the wind, and that's gonna slow the boat down a lot. So, a little bit of boat terminology there. And we are forecasting about a two week journey up to Kodiak, Alaska. And we have prepared 
quite intensely for this journey. The captain has done this trip many times. He's been doing it since he was a small boy, so I'm pretty confident in his ability. Of course, you just can't be too prepared, but as far as being prepared, he has a lot of years of experience, which puts my mind at ease. And when you're out here on the ocean, if you're not confident in the people that you are with and you're not willing to put your life in their hands, it's kind of dramatic, but at the same time, if anything does happen, you have to ask yourself, am I, do I have faith in the people that are with me to save me, to save my ass in case I go overboard? So if the answer is no, you might want to rethink coming out on the ocean because anything can happen and you're also in a small space with those people. So if you are having problems on the land, especially if you're doing gear work or doing anything in preparation to go for a long extended boat journey and you're already having problems with someone, it's probably not a good idea for you to go because the boat is such a small space and that's what makes this work environment so different is that you really have to get along with the people that you're working with and a lot of the times it's fine. But sometimes if you have, you know, just one, maybe you guys are both really good workers, but you're just butting heads. You're just constantly in each other's face. There's just nowhere to hide. You know, this is, this is a rather big boat. So it's a 70 foot boat and there's a little bit more space here, but still it, there's just not a lot of space to avoid people. So that's something to think about if you guys are thinking about, you know, starting fishing or going on a boat travel trip with someone is just, do you think that you can spend a lot of time with them? And do you think that they would save you in an emergency? My answers are yes to those questions. And something else to think about is, you know, if you are interested in fishing, I've gotten a lot of comments from people saying, I wish I could do that. You know, or are you guys hiring? Or, and thank you so much for those comments. I, I always love to get those. I always love to feel the interest in what we're doing here. I have so much fun on the ocean. I love being on the ocean. I love what we're doing here. I love not only crabbing, but interacting with sea life and just kind of being out here in nature, which is so um, uncommon. It's a very uncommon job as far as being out in nature most of the time. So that's one thing I really like about it. So we are not currently hiring, but if that changes, I will definitely let you know. I will put it out on the channel if we're looking for someone. So thank you always for your interest in that. However, there are so many ports and so many fishing boats that are hiring. So if you are looking for some kind of a fishing job, whether it be tuna or crab or halibut, there are so many types of fishing jobs in Kodiak, Alaska. I can't wait to show you guys what that looks like. The boat harbor is amazing. There's, I mean, you just look around and there's basically just like, I would venture to say hundreds of millions of dollars into fishing vessels that are in the harbor. And it's insanely just, you're just awestruck. I was awestruck just looking around at these huge, massive fishing vessels. And you just know, you know, how expensive that is, number one. And number two, just kind of the, the awesomeness of man, like the humans, like inventing something and making something that's so freaking badass to go out into the water and to be able to catch, you know, what's out in the ocean, the fish. And I've been learning so much about the different fisheries, black cod fisheries, which is pretty big up in Alaska. There's halibut fisheries. There's different types of salmon. There's five different types of salmon for you that didn't know. So I also used to work in a restaurant and a lot of times in different restaurant menus, we put filet of salmon. And for the average layperson, that sounds great if you like salmon, but there are different types of salmon. So there's dog salmon and then there's pink salmon or humpy salmon. There's silver salmon, which are also called cohos. A lot of people are familiar with the shook, chinook, or king salmon. And then there's the sockeye salmon, which are also called reds. A lot of the times the fishermen go from one species to another. So one fisherman might be fishing crab in the winter time, but then he'll fish squid in the springtime. And then he might fish tuna in the summertime. I thought that was really interesting when I found that out. For some reason, I just thought that if someone was a tuna fisherman, he just fished tuna. And if he is a halibut fisherman, he just fished halibut. Well, no, he wants to fish the different species as the different seasons open up. So that's kind of a little, little tidbit of something interesting. 
So as you can see, it looks pretty choppy out here. It's been overcast most of the day. We've had some pretty big swells or rockers since we've left Newport yesterday. Just to give you an idea, we left Newport Harbor around 3.30 in the afternoon and the captain was up since 6 a.m. that morning and he didn't sleep until 4 a.m. this morning. I went to sleep, I asked him if he wanted a nap or anything as the relief captain and he said he was fine. So I got up at 4 a.m. this morning and I wanted to give him a break so he ended up taking a nap from about 4 to 6. And then the next nap after that was about 5 p.m. to 6.30. So this is a trip where if people do go north to Alaska, I think that's one of the most interesting parts that the captains, especially the captains that have been doing it a long time, they barely sleep on the way up there. And their bodies just know that. Yep, I'm gonna barely sleep. Well, at least that's some of the captains that I know. There's probably some captains out there that have a relief captain specifically designed to give them eight hours of sleep. I'm sure each boat is a little bit different, but I do know the captain specifically and some other fishermen where they just kind of like to stay at the wheel as much as possible and just get a few naps here and there, especially if they're going up there by themselves and they don't even have a relief captain. So that's kind of interesting. Pretty excited to get back into the bush of Alaska. There's just nothing like that Alaska backcountry to really let you know that you're out in the middle of nowhere and for those of you nature lovers backcountry lovers if you've never been to alaska i highly recommend it and even if you can just you know get a flight into kodiak check out some stuff there they have car rentals there obviously hotels i don't know if that's obvious or not but restaurants and definitely there's a tourism industry in kodiak and that would be the easiest way to get to alaska and do some backcountry Last night, the boat started really rocking and rolling and those four wheelers, as they were put kind of facing side to side, they were rocking a little back to forth. So Captain thought it was a good idea if we had them facing forward. So we actually went out there in the elements. It was raining pretty good. I had a pretty good swell. We went out there and we were able to position those four wheelers so they're facing forward like this in the middle of the boat so they wouldn't, you know, rock back and forth on the wheels. And what ended up happening between last night and this morning was we got a pretty, we got some pretty good rocker waves that came and they rocked those four wheelers kind of all over to the one side of the boat. So if that gives you an idea as to the swell and the rocks of waves that we do see on the boat, it's pretty, it's pretty interesting is a word for it. <laughs> and you have to be willing to go to sleep in that, to stay asleep. Sometimes I wake up to a big wave and you kind of wake up to, you know, like this it'll come back down and then I'm like okay I'm just gonna it's gonna go back to sleep and hope for the best you know I'm sure it'll be fine <laughs> and um, another thing is when you're preparing for a long journey especially on a boat is if everything's not tight or on the floor in a secure location as soon as you get out into any kind of ocean with waves and elements I'm gonna call it the rock and roll test because things start to get rocking and rolling and if there's a door that's not latched, if there's a cupboard that's not latched, if there's any kind of pots and pans that are not secure into the cupboards or wherever they are, they're gonna start rocking and rolling and sometimes they're gonna start making sounds to let you know, hey, I'm free. I might be flying anywhere. So I always, it never fails that as soon as we take off for a long trip, there's always something that either crashes to the floor or comes open or I forget a cupboard or I didn't put something away right or even something that you thought was put away right will come loose and then we try not to have glass bottles on the boat because they get broken easily but if there are glass I try to have something in between them so anyways that's part of the journey also just going down there and trying to make sure that everything is secure I'm gonna take you downstairs so you can have a look at what's going on on the back deck right here because that's pretty interesting see this is our this is our rock and roll right there all that stuff it already rocked and rolled obviously not too much because the fruit basket's still here i love a good fruit basket it just makes you want to eat it all right you're gonna see the four wheelers you're gonna see the pots the 
you can tell that's tipped over. between the time that I'm making this video and when I'm putting it up. It's like any kind of sitcom or any kind of series. You know, you have to make it and then I gotta have time and not a rocking boat to try to edit it and do the work that I want to it. And then I have to be able to upload it, which is a huge thing in Alaska. There's not a lot of reception. So today is May 5th and I will be uploading these sequentially so you can see our journey as we go along. Thank you so much for watching. Love your comments. Let me know if you have any questions. And I'll be seeing you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Ballerina. You must have seen her dancing in the sand. And now she's in me. Always with me. Tiny dancer in my head